Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Wiring your printer safely is essential to reducing wire strain. Wire strain causes hardening, heating and eventually fire or failure. Of course, you don't want those. So one way to wire the printer safely is to use drag chains just like these. Although they're not necessarily that easy to implement. So today I'm going to explain to you how you can implement drag chains on your 3D printer. This video is part of the Formbot Raptor upgrade slash rebuild series to make it a safer and better printer. So if you want to check the rest of the playlist, it'll be linked in the description. Drag chains are a series of chain links, which when connected together, form a protected path all the way from one end to the other. Their purpose is to prevent high stress points in the wires and cables that run through them. These high stress points are caused by fatigue, which is repetitive bending as a result of motion. Drag chains reduce the effect of the fatigue and stress by distributing the bend over the full length of the chain and cable rather than focusing in a single point. When used correctly, drag chains can allow for thousands of hours of high speed repetitive motion without damage to the internal cables. However, if implemented incorrectly, it can cause accelerated wear on the internal cables, causing them to fail prematurely. Firstly, they need to have the rolling appearance and remain parallel throughout the motion. So what does the rolling look like? Well, rolling on a drag chain looks like this. You can see how in this bend zone, it looks like it's kind of rolling over the edge, sort of like a ball is rolling down it. You want to always retain that kind of motion when using a drag chain. If you're starting to move in two axes, then you'll get this really kind of random loose motion, which won't help you. And likewise, if you do it in a XY plane, then you have the same problem. Also, if you're implementing in just a single axis, but you don't constrain the ends properly, you might just move in one direction, but you have this sort of weird bending. And as you can see, this point is bending more than any other and therefore making the drag chain somewhat redundant. Next, you want to make sure that you clamp the cables at both ends, typically something like a cable tie. The reason you need to do this is during the motion, as it moves back and forwards, you get a kind of caterpillar effect, where although there's clearly no overall motion in the cable, the wires on the inside tend to kind of slip slowly at one end. And if they're not controlled on the inside, this can also cause excessive wear on the cables in the bend. So you don't need to attach the cables directly to the drag chain, but just off the end, somewhere very close to the end, they need to be really permanently fixed. No slipping, sliding or movement of any kind. And that needs to be at both ends of the drag chain. Tip number three, don't pull the cables tight on the inside. While you might be thinking this drag chain is a single length, it's not going to change. That's sort of true, but also sort of not. As the cables roll around the bend, because the difference between the inside and outside diameters, there is some rolling and potential abrasion in that area. So if you pull the cables tight on the inside, they will rub against the inside of the drag chain as it moves back and forwards. And you'll get some slight stretching in the cable in those areas too, which you do not want. The way you should put the cables in is to place them inside and then make sure they're kind of on the outside bend or just floating slightly above it. So just the right length to keep them between the two sides, not pushing against either. Number four, don't pack the cables tightly. You need to make sure you have the right size of drag chain for the number of cables that you want to use. There are a number of different sizes available, so ensure you get a suitable size for the number of cables you want to put inside. If you're having to push them in and stuff them in the side as you kind of clip the tops on, then you've probably got too many cables in there. Ideally, you want them to be just sitting along next to each other across one axis at the base of the drag chain. But in basic applications like 3D printers, we don't need to go quite to this extreme because we're moving at very low speeds and relatively low duty cycle. But you don't want the cables crossing over too much. You don't want them twisting around each other. You don't want too much length inside. Basically, just don't pack the cables really tightly on the inside. Leave plenty of room for each of them to wiggle around a little bit. Tip number five is to use a high strand count silicon wire in the drag chain. Now, 
Companies like IGUS, EGUS, however you want to pronounce it, produce specially designed cables specifically for drag chains, and they also produce drag chains as well. But these are for high-end industrial applications where you can be moving at multiple meters per second for thousands of meters a day, 24-7, 365 days a year, and you need years and years of operation. 3D printers, relative to that, are really very slow and they don't move very far, even if you're running them 24-7. So we don't need to go quite to the same extremes. However, what we can do is to ensure the cables that we're using are still highly flexible. The first way we do that is to increase the strand count. On the inside of each wire, you want many, many little strands that make up the overall cable. This means as you bend it, they can very slightly slip over each other and it allows the cable to be very flexible. The second way we do that is to ensure that the sleeve on the outside of the cable is also very flexible. The two most common types of sleeve on a cable are PVC and silicone. Silicone is very flexible, while PVC is a bit harder and more rigid. As again, we want them to be as flexible as possible, so that makes silicone an excellent choice. Silicone wires are a little bit more expensive than their PVC counterparts, but they're also suitable for high temperatures, so anywhere that they're close to a bed or hot end, they should be able to resist at least most of that temperature, unless they're very close or your hot end is very hot. Obviously, some small drag chains like this one have quite a tight bend radius, so you need to make sure that the cables you're putting inside can easily meet that bend radius. Of course, you want to make sure still that any wire that you do choose is rated for the currents and voltages which are going to be running through them. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a different episode. Tip number six is to ensure that the drag chains are fixed securely at both ends. Now, this particular drag chain that I'm holding doesn't have the ends on, but drag chains always have the little ends used to mount them to a platform base or panel or something. Typically, one of these can rotate freely while the other is locked to the rotation of the drag chain. You can use this to your advantage. If you're seeing back and forwards motion, but it's kind of starting to lift and the cables inside are maybe starting to go like this, you can use the fact that one end is rigidly fixed to force it down to remain parallel. Also, if it's suitable for your design, try and identify the drag chains with these clips on the top, which I can't get off very easily with my fingers. Having the clips on the top makes insertion of the cables much easier because you can release all the clips, place the cable in vertically, and then put them back down again. If you have smaller drag chains like this variety just here, these don't have a clip over the top. So all cables have to be inserted from the end, which is okay if you've only got a few cables, but if you're doing more than just a couple, then it can get quite difficult, especially if you need to add more later on. So that's it for the principles of the design. In theory, that's how you would do it. So now let me show you how I've implemented these on the Formbot printer. On the y-axis I've reused the extrusion that I took off the x-axis originally because it was damaged, cut down the length and used that as part of the basis to support the drag chain. The original one on the form bot was just dangling under the printer which was not very good. So now it's nicely supported and should work much better. The old drag chain was mounted using only a single screw but I need more than that. So I'm adding three for the drag chain itself and a second one next to the original in order to have a cable tie to hold the cables securely. Since the X carriage doesn't need to move all the way to the end of the extrusion, I can just mount the drag chain with a 3D printed part using some T-nuts into the top of the extrusion.
So everything is in place now. As you can see, the wires are in there too. I've not shown you those yet, but we're going to cover that in the next episode. All the wires, connectors, and different types, and crimps, and all those sorts of things which you need to DIY a printer or even modify some simple things on your own. So of course, hit subscribe below to make sure you don't miss that. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it. It's great feedback from me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.